century came to a close, power and wealth could be counted in cattle. Men connived, fought, and killed to carve great self-sufficient cattle empires out of the rich grazing land. But no matter how many cattle a man owned or how vast his empire, when faced with illness or death, he sought help from another. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. The Merrick Ranch was so big it was like a kingdom. It all belonged to one man, old Hal Merrick, the richest, meanest, most powerful man west of the Mississippi. Hal had no regard, no respect, no affection for anyone in the world except himself and his granddaughter, Savannah. time, honey. No, I want to talk to you now. With Dr. Rickard out of town, you shouldn't be taking so many chances. But suppose Caesar had stepped in a gopher hole. I've turned over with him before. I can take care of myself. Grant! Dr. Rickard's out of town. There's doctor's a young fellow over in Rising Springs. Go find him and bring the sheriff, too. Yes, ma'am. Get a wagon. We've got to get Gramps back to the ranch. Three hours later, Sheriff Andrews and I reached the Merrick Ranch. Way down. You better wait here. I'll call you after I've made the examination. Are you the doctor? Dr. Bill Baxter. How is he? He's conscious now. The bullet got him in the shoulder. Who are you? Baxter is the name. Had any training to be a doctor? Three years at Long Island Medical. Can't be much good or you wouldn't be in a hick town like Rising Springs. And the best that's available. Have you got any brandy or whiskey? Yes, right here. Hey, take it easy. Doc says you can come in now, Sheriff. He'll be all right. Here's the bullet. Well, that's not much help. Can I talk to him? Sure. I just gave him some brandy to deaden the pain, so... He may be a little drunk. Yeah. Take more than one bottle to do that. Mr. Merrick, did you see the fellow who shot you? No. Nope. None of us did. The men couldn't even pick up his trail. Well, do you have any enemies who might want to kill you? Dozens of them. You can't get where I am without stepping on a lot of toes. Well, that's not much to go on, but I'll do my best. You better or we get a new sheriff. Yes, sir. Mr. Merrick, you try to get some sleep. I'll be back to see you in a couple of days. How'd it go, honey? You didn't kill him. What? Why did you only shoot once? Why didn't you make sure? I was sure. I, I saw him fall, and I thought well, that he... Well, you thought wrong. I'm sorry, honey. No wonder you're upset. I'm not upset. I'm angry. Charlie Pierce. Train robber, gunman, graduate of the Doolin gang. And you couldn't even hit a sitting duck. Oh, relax, honey. We can try again, can't we? You do love me, don't you, Charlie? Thought I proved that this morning by shooting a man for you. I mean, it is me you love, not the money I'll inherit. I thought we had that settled. Charlie, 
Charlie, I didn't mean what I said. Let's get it straight, Savannah. You're the one that wants the money. I wanted to marry you whether Hal Merrick approved or not, but you wouldn't risk it. And it was your idea to get rid of Hal so she could have me and the money. Ain't that right? Yes, Charlie. Anytime I need money, I can go out and rob a bank. I don't have to marry for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll never mention money again. In that case, I think I'll stick around. You know, having a fight's almost worth the effort. It's so relaxing afterwards. That wasn't really a fight. You know, I have an idea, Charlie. So have I. I know a way to get rid of Gramps without taking any risk. How? Here you are, Miss Hatfield. That ought to be enough there to last you a couple of weeks. Take one every night at bedtime. Have a nice time in Kingston. Thank you, Doctor. Joe will have your medicine in just a moment. Well, the little black bull come down the meadow. Who's in Johnny? Who's in Johnny? The little black bull come down the meadow long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. Little black bull come down the meadow long time ago. Do you always sing while you work, Dr. Baxter? Howdy, Miss Merrick. May I come in? You betcha. How's your grandfather? Fine, thank you. Go on with what you're doing. Mixing up a little prescription here. Us country doctors have to be our own druggists. Oh, then I feel doubly guilty. Oh, how's that? Well, I was, I was mixing the sedative last night, and I spilled the whole lot. <laughs> That's no trouble. I mix up batches of that stuff in advance. I'll get you some more. Thank you. Why don't you take care of that man outside? He, he looks like he's been waiting quite a while. He has. Thank you. you're wondering why I came myself instead of sending one of the hands. Oh, I hadn't thought about it. I wanted to see you. Oh, have you been ill? No. What are you like when you're not being the calm, detached, slightly superior man of medicine? <laughs> I'm not a superior man. I'm just an ordinary guy doing my best at the most interesting and rewarding job in the world. I can't figure you out. There's nothing to figure out. This ought to hold him till morning and I'll be out and see him. I'll look forward to seeing you, Dr. Baxter. Be sure and follow the same instructions. Hey, Doc. Hello, Mr. Peterson. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Wife's having another one of them spells, though. Can you think up some more of that stuff that'll let her rest easy? Just happen to have some right here. You get some sleep, Sarge. I'll sit up for a while. Thanks, ma'am. What do you got there? A glass of milk. Milk? <laughs> Want to poison me? There's some medicine in it to make you sleep. And I put some whiskey in to kill the taste of the milk. Why didn't you just put the medicine in the whiskey? Come on, bottoms up. No. Come on, drink it all. Come on. Oh, that was terrible. It'll do you good. I'll tuck you in and in a little while you, you'll be asleep. What's the matter? Oh, oh, get the doctor, quick! No doctor could get here in time. That was poison. I know. Sent for him 
immediately, but it was dawn before I reached the ranch. Oh. Hal Merrick was dead. There was nothing I could do. I hate to bother Miss Merrick, but it's very important that I see her for a moment. She's mighty upset, Doc. Maybe if you could wait till... What did you want to see me about? I have reason to believe your grandfather was poisoned. Poisoned? That's impossible. There are burns around the mouth which indicate the presence of acid. Did he have anything to eat or drink after supper? Only the sedative you prescribed. Where's the glass you mixed it in? It's been washed. Where's the little packet the medicine came in? Sarge, will you go in the kitchen and see if you can find it, please? Yes, ma'am. How did you give it to him? I mixed it in some warm milk and flavored it with a little whiskey. Gramps didn't like the taste of milk. Where's the whiskey? Come on, I'll show you. Here it is, right where I left it. I know the milk's all right. I had some myself when I was warming it for Gramps. Here's the medicine packet. I found it in the waste paper basket. What's the matter? Oxalic acid. Who could have tampered with this? No one. It was in my pocketbook until I fixed it. That puts it square up to you, Doc. You got your medicines mixed. It's impossible. Why? Can't you make a mistake the same as anyone else? You killed Gramps. This was all right when I gave it to you. How could it have been? You ought to be arrested for murder. You go back to my office with me. I think I can prove it wasn't my fault. All right. But if you can't prove it, we'll stop off to see the sheriff. Come on. Sheriff. I'm afraid so. That makes two people you've murdered. My grandfather died last night. Poisoned by some of his medicine. Oh, yes. Take him out. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll... Yes. It was like a nightmare. It couldn't be happening, and yet it was. I was placed under arrest, charged with manslaughter. When it was found that the entire batch of sedative in my office was poisonous, the case against me was complete. But, Bill, the Merricks are important people. I can't let you out unless you put up bail. Look, Sheriff, I mixed that medicine 30 days ago, and I've used it 50 times without any ill effect. I even gave your wife some of it. Someone deliberately added the poison. This is more than just solving a murder or proving my own innocence. This involves people's confidence in the whole medical profession. What do you think this town would do without a doctor? And how about you last year with that bullet in your back? I guess you're right, Bill. With all the excitement, I've sort of forgotten all the good things you've done. What is it you want me to do? I want out of here for just four hours, and I'll be back. Well, your word's good enough for me. I'll probably be sorry for this in the morning, but out the back way. You can borrow Sam's horse. Thank you. I headed for the Merrick Ranch. There were a few questions I wanted to ask Savannah. Nothing in the world is going to be too good for Mr. and Mrs. Charlie Pierce. Yeah, that sounds kind of nifty, doesn't it? How soon do you think we'll get hitched? Just you filling my drink. Oh, no, there's, there's no rush about it. What do you mean by that? I just... I just don't want things to get too complicated. It's not complicated. You and me are getting married. The money is important, isn't it? Sure it's important. Either we get married and live happily ever after, or... I'll go to the sheriff and tell him what really happened to him. Don't, don't say that. I love you. I'll marry you. I'll do anything you say. 
Well, that's more like it. You know, there's nothing like blackmail to bring people close together. Don't even joke about it. It, it isn't just the money, is it? You, you do love me, don't you, Charlie? Sure, I love you. What do you say we have a little drink and uh, celebrate our engagement, huh? Anything you say, Charlie. Shouldn't have threatened me, Charlie. Of explaining to do. And I tell you again, Sheriff, I only ran from Dr. Baxter because I thought he might be another outlaw. Dr. Baxter, I want to thank you for bringing me home, telling me there's nothing wrong with my ankle. But that doesn't leave you free to insult me. I only ask you how well you knew Charlie Pierce. Until he walked in that cabin, I never saw him before in my life. And when he tried to to keep you there, you shot him in self-defense. Of course it was self-defense. Sheriff, will you tell him again the man was a known criminal? He was a member of the Doolin gang. What are you getting at, Bill? I think Miss Merrick understands. No. No, I don't understand. All right, then. I don't think Charlie Pierce was shot in self-defense. How dare you? Are you out of your mind? I think he knew too much. You are out of your mind. First you poisoned my grandfather, and, and then for no reason, with no proof, you accused me of... I didn't say I had proof. All I wanted you to know is what I think. Then I'll tell you what I think. You're a miserable, sneaking coward who poisoned two innocent people, and, and you're trying to create a diversion. I'm sorry about this, Miss Merrick. Take him back to jail where he belongs. Come on, Baxter. Since I'm being my own lawyer, I hope you'll excuse my mistakes. To save time, I admit that all the testimony you've heard up to now is true. Mrs. Peterson and Mr. Merrick were poisoned by a sedative furnished by me. The prosecution maintains that the presence of poison in that jar was due to my carelessness. I intend to prove that it was not carelessness at all, but part of a successful attempt to commit murder. Order! Order! As my first witness, I'd like to ask Miss Savannah Merrick to return to the stand. Miss Merrick has already testified. You had ample opportunity for cross-examination. Please, Your Honor. I'll call very few witnesses, and Miss Merrick is one of them. Very well. 
Miss Mary. The witness has previously been sworn in. Now, Miss Mary, you testified that you arrived at my office about 2.35 on the afternoon of the 8th. Is that correct? Yes. You testified with admirable accuracy as to what took place there, but there was one omission. What was I doing when you came in? You were mixing some sort of medicine. And will you tell the court now what I did with that medicine? You gave it to a man who was waiting for it. In other words, I stepped out of the room. Yes. That'll be all, Miss Mary. As my next witness, I'd like to call to the stand Mrs. Abernathy Hatfield. Here I am. Hello, Sam. Place your hand on the book. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? You know me better than that, Sam. Of course I do. Now, Mrs. Hatfield, did you visit my office on the afternoon of the 8th? You know I did. It's the day I went to visit my sister. Mrs. Hatfield, when you left my office, did you see anyone else arriving? Well, I was just about to get in the buggy when Miss Merrick rode up. I spoke to her, but um, she didn't seem to notice. And Miss Merrick arrived immediately after you left. That's right. Now, Mrs. Hatfield, I gave you a packet of medicine, didn't I? You did. And would you tell the court where I got that medicine? From that jar, the um, large one. You sure that's the same one? Oh, perfectly sure. Dr. Bash has just given me medicine from that jar many times. Do you have some of that medicine with you, Mrs. Hatfield? Yes, I have. Do you swear that that medicine is the same that I took from that jar? I do. Would you mind taking some of it now? Um, oh, I don't see why not. As if you'd been poisoned? No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> That'll be all. Thank you very much. Miss Merrick. Just a moment, please. Judge wants you, Miss Merrick. Come back to the stand, please. I've, I've already testified twice. I fail to see why I have to go through this again. Please be seated. You heard Mrs. Hatfield's testimony, and you saw her drink the medicine I gave her? Yes. So when Mrs. Hatfield left my office, that jar contained a harmless sedative. I don't know that. Unless Mrs. Hatfield was lying, that'd be the case, wouldn't it? I suppose so. However, a few minutes after Mrs. Hatfield left, that jar contained a deadly poison. How do you account for that? I don't know. Only two people had a chance to add that poison. Myself, who had no reason to do so, and Miss Merrick, who stood to inherit a fortune upon the death of her grandfather. Take her into custody. Hold her. Hey, you better come with me. I'll kill you for this. I'll kill you. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Clear the court. Well, Dr. Baxter, I guess I owe you an apology. She had everybody fooled, including me. If she's tried in my court, I'll see that she gets what's coming to her. What about me? Am I free to go? With my blessing. And I want to congratulate you on the way that you handled it. Abby, doctor, that medicine she's had to Is she? Is she? Is she dead? <clears throat> go away. Leave me alone, boys. The first good sleep I've had in a month. <laughs> <laughs> On May 
15, 1898, Savannah Merrick was tried and convicted of the poisoning of her grandfather, Hal Merrick, and the murder of Charlie Pierce, member of the Doolin Gang. 